Sometimes we just need to erase the double bond. And if that's what you need to do to get your target molecule, the hydrogenation is the reaction you need to perform. So in this video, we'll go over ins and outs of this simple yet powerful reaction that converts alkenes into alkanes. Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I help students excel in organic chemistry by explaining difficult concepts in a clear and straightforward way. So grab a cup of coffee, a notebook to work through examples with me, hit that like button so YouTube shows this video to more chemistry students, and let's get started! I would have started with the mechanism of this reaction like I typically do for all my reaction videos, but we don't really know the exact mechanism for this reaction, and if anybody tells you otherwise, they're lying to you. Don't get me wrong though, we do have a pretty good idea what's going on in this reaction, but there is no really a mechanism, and I'm doing the air quotes right now, although you're not seeing that, in the sense of the, you know, curved arrows for the mechanism, that is. So the mechanism starts by the absorption of the H2 on our metal catalyst. And as a metal catalyst, we can use a number of different metals. We can use palladium, or we can use platinum, or we can use nickel, or we can use what I like to call poor chemist catalyst, palladium on carbon, which is significantly cheaper than a regular palladium powder. So once we have our metal catalyst, it's going to absorb the hydrogen. And if you really want curved arrows for that, we can say that these electrons go onto the palladium and palladium gives electrons to another hydrogen. So we are going to end up with essentially an atomic hydrogen absorbed on the surface of our metal. Then, once the double bond comes in, I will show my generic double bond looking something like that, once the double bond comes in, it's going to pick those hydrogens up. And again, if you really want uh, your curved arrows, then I can show something like this. These electrons go to one carbon, electrons of the pi bond go onto the hydrogen, and the electrons from the hydrogen go onto the palladium, something of that sort. As a result, we're going to end up with an alkane, which has picked up those hydrogens and palladium is ready for the next cycle of this reaction. This reaction is stereospecific, it is a syn addition, meaning that both hydrogens that you are adding to your molecule going to end up on the same side or the same face of the molecule. Is this reaction 100% stereospecific? Actually, no. In some cases, it can give you up to 20% of the antiproduct, but we try not to focus on that within the scope of a typical sophomore organic chemistry. For our purposes, this reaction is going to be stereospecific and it's going to be syn addition. So we will never talk about any uh, possibility of the antiproduct here. We postulate that as a concerted mechanism, meaning that both hydrogens add to your molecule at the same time. It's not 100% supported by the experimental data, but as I said, we're not going to tell you that. So for our purposes, that's going to be a concerted mechanism. And one other thing that I want to point out here is that the term hydrogenation is interchangeable with the term reduction in this reaction. So sometimes you can hear people call that as a hydrogenation reaction of alkenes, or sometimes you can very well hear some uh, people say that this is a reduction of alkenes. Both terms are synonymous for our purposes, and there is no real difference between those, so within the scope of your course, you can use either term, whichever you like more. And for the examples here, I'm going to start with 1,2-dimethylcyclohexene, my new best friend. And do you know why it is better than just a simple methylcyclohexene? Of course, because it has two methyl groups. So in this case, we're going to add both of those hydrogens to our molecule. So if I say that these hydrogens, let's highlight them in blue like that, once I draw my product, I'm going to show both of them on the same side of the molecule. So let's imagine that my attack happened from the back face like this. That would have to push your methyl groups to look at you, so now our methyl groups are going to be on the wedges like that. And of course I can show the other version where the attack happened from the front face, uh, so my molecule would look like that. What would be the relationship between these two? If you said that those are an antimer, I caught you, because that is actually a mesa compound. We have an internal plane of symmetry over here, so these two are representations of exactly the same molecule. So, as always, do pay attention to your stereochemistry, because stereochemistry is always relevant. 
All right, let's look at another example. In this case, I have a double bond again, and I am adding my hydrogens across that double bond. So I'm going to add those hydrogens from the front face of the molecule that will look like this. So I will have one hydrogen looking at me and another hydrogen looking at me. And the other one is going to look the following way where I have one hydrogen looking away from me and another one looking away from me as well. Now, the atom on the right side of the molecule, this carbon here and this carbon here, those are not chiral atoms. So showing the stereochemistry at that point is kind of irrelevant. So I'm going to just erase those hydrogens. I'm going to make those hydrogens implicit. Then, I do have the chirality at the other carbon, so this carbon here and this carbon, they are chiral indeed, and to make it a little bit more explicit, uh, you know, what's going on there, I'm going to change this bond into a dash, and accordingly, I'm going to change that bond into a wedge like that. So now these two are in fact enantiomers because my blue carbon in each case does contain four different groups attached to it. So that makes that carbon chiral. And if we only have one chiral carbon in a molecule, the molecule itself will end up chiral as well. And here is another good example. Here, if I were to add my hydrogen across my carbons of the double bond, I can have both hydrogens adding from the back side, which would give me a molecule that looks like this, or I can have my hydrogens adding from the front side. Now, in this case, like in the previous case, I'm going to get rid of the hydrogens at a non-chiral atom, which is the CH3 on the bottom of my molecule, because that one is not relevant, so I'm going to get rid of those ones. And I'm going to make a methyl group to look a little bit more explicitly where it would be pushed by my hydrogen. In the first case, it is pushed at me, and in the second case, I would have to put it on the dash looking like this. Now, in this case, the relationship between my molecules is going to end up being diastereomers, because while I did create a new chiral carbon over here in both cases, I did have a chiral carbon there to begin with, and that chiral carbon at OCH3, at methoxy group, that chiral carbon stayed unchanged, so as a result, I ended up with two molecules that are neither superimposable in space, nor they are mere images of each other. So as you can see, the hydrogenation is a simple yet straightforward reaction that allows you to get rid of the double bond and add hydrogens to your molecule in a seen fashion. We are not really ever going to ask you to show the mechanism, so that makes your life significantly easier in terms of uh, drawing this reaction. You can easily predict your product by sticking your hydrogens onto the molecule where you used to have a double bond. Now you have a couple of hydrogens on the dashes or the wedges. Now, here is something important to keep in mind. If you have multiple double bonds in your molecule, like in this example that I have on this page, all will be reduced. The only thing that is safe is going to be the aromatic ring, which only succumbs to this reaction at extreme pressure of hydrogen and temperatures. So in this case, I'm going to get the final product that looks like this, where both of my double bonds have been reduced, yet my aromatic ring stays untouched. Other than that, there are no really any tricks or any weirdness you should expect from this reaction. It is indeed as simple as it looks like. Thank you all for watching this video. I want to especially thank all Organic Chemistry Tutor members and my generous donors. I strive to upload new videos every single day and this would not be possible without your help and encouragement. If you learned something new today, please give this video a like and leave a comment below. So this way YouTube algorithm will promote this video and show it to more people. In the meantime, watch this video next, leave me your questions in the comments below and I'll see you tomorrow.